Okay, I think uh, we can begin. Uh, hello, everybody. And um, we continue our lessons after the break. Uh, so I hope that uh, that you were able to get some rest from from our classes and now you have new uh, new motivation and uh, as you probably seen uh, I posted a project a project description uh, and uh, you're welcome to uh, ask questions about these projects uh, if you have any ideas uh, of your um, of your research project we can discuss them uh, and uh, anyway, uh, you have to uh, prepare uh, some kind of preliminary uh, paper that is devoted to uh, what, what is your research question and what are your hypotheses and how would you test this hypothesis with your data and so on. Uh, and uh, this is uh, actually a rather important step because uh, at this point, uh, we will be able to discuss uh, to discuss uh, your projects, and uh, I think uh, I will arrange uh, some individual consultations for everybody. Uh, who uh, so, so we will be able to to discuss how to proceed. Uh, and and okay, I think we can continue. Right. And uh, now uh, I'd like to discuss, um, to start a new topic uh, that is uh, that is called regressions and um, correlations. Okay, correlations and regressions. Uh, and uh, let me recall uh, that previously we discussed uh, we discussed several statistical tests, and uh, at least some of them can be considered as uh, the tests uh, that ask: uh, Is it true that uh, two variables in our data are independent uh, or not? Uh, for example, we discussed um, t-test. And uh, in t-test, uh, we, we, we said that we have two groups uh, of observations, two samples, in two sample t-test. Uh, and uh, we are asking, is it true that two, these two samples have different means? So if we are interested only in, only in the expected value, on, only in the sample mean, uh, then basically we are asking, is it true that in these two groups um, the values are similar, that they are the same? Uh, and we can restate it in terms of uh, dependent and independent uh, random variables. Uh, I mean that uh, we can treat uh, our t-test uh, like uh, the following. Let me make a quick quick recap. Um, uh, tests we started so far uh, as independence tests. And first example is two sample t test. Uh, for example, we have two variables, CT and height. And uh, we have CT Moscow, St. Petersburg, again Moscow, again Moscow, and again St. Petersburg. And we have 
some values here. Something like this. And uh, we are asking, is it true that height uh, in Moscow is different from height in, in, in St. Petersburg? Uh, when we are discussing t-test, we are interested only in mean value. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, in this case, uh, if, for example, we say that height does not depend on the city, uh, then it means that null hypothesis holds for t-test. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, we can uh, we can ask a question: uh, Is it true uh, that height uh, depends on the city? So this is the question uh, which which uh, this is the question uh, that is asked uh, when we are interested in t-test, when we apply t-test, uh, to, to sample t-test. Uh, and uh, another example uh, is his squared test. Uh, my computer says that my internet connection can be uh, uh, not reliable from time to time. So if uh, you feel that uh, I disappeared for uh, for a moment, just please uh, let me know uh, and I will repeat everything. Uh, if, if you feel that something is missed due to some connectivity problem, just do not hesitate to, uh, to, to, to let me know and I will repeat it. Uh, so his squared test. In his squared test, uh, we have uh, a bit different uh, case. We have again uh, two variables, uh, but now it is something like a city and uh, some dialectical form used. And it can be something like Moscow no, St. Petersburg, no, Moscow, yes, again, Moscow, no, and so on. Um, so, and uh, again, uh, we are asking about the independence of this variable dialectical form and this variable city. So we are asking, is it true that people in Moscow use this dialectical form more often or less often than people in St. Petersburg? And if the answer is negative, then it means that these two variables are independent of each other. From, no, from probabilistic point of view. So here we are asking, is it true that Uh, city and dialectical form are independent. Uh, you, you had uh, the notion of independent events in, in uh, probability, yes? And uh, here we just think that our data are created as a pair of random variables, something something random. And uh, we are asking about their independence. Uh, if they are independent, it means uh, that uh, our distribution of uh, this variable is independent on uh, the value of this variable. So basically it means that the knowledge of uh, value of this variable in this case of city gives us, uh, no, don't give us any new information about uh, this variable. And if uh, two variables are dependent, it means that knowledge of uh, one variable gives you some new information about the value of uh, the other variable. This is, this is basically the definition of uh, independence and dependence. And uh, here uh, it is the same thing. 
uh, if we say that uh, these variables are independent, then uh, it basically means that if you know that a person is from Moscow, uh, it gives you not, uh, it, it don't give you any information about uh, how often they will use this dialectical form. And if they are dependent, uh, it means that you have new information. You can extract some information uh, about this dialectical form usage from this variable city. For example, uh, you can expect that people in St. Petersburg use this dialectical form more often than in Moscow or less often. And uh, in these two tests, uh, we have um, uh, the, the variables that we uh, consider, uh, they have the following types. Uh, here in two sample t test, uh, we have a categorical variable. And uh, specifically, uh, this is binary variable. It means that it can take only two possible values uh, and uh, some numeric variable. And uh, in, in his squared test, uh, what kind of variables we consider here? Categorical? Yes, two categorical variables. So this one is categorical and this one is categorical. Uh, so you see that in our, uh, in our uh, lessons so far, uh, we discussed uh, two, uh, two cases. When you're asking about independence uh, between categorical and numeric variables and between two categorical. And uh, what, uh, what remains? Two numeric. Two numeric, yes. And this is exactly what we uh, will uh, be discussing now and uh, for some time. Uh, so now we will discuss um, dependence of two numeric variables. And this is, uh, this is today's story. And uh, let me consider uh, some numeric variables. Uh, again, uh, I will uh, consider some virtual experiment, imaginary experiment. Uh, that, uh, for example, we are interested in something like um, language acquisition. Uh, when, when people start uh, using language, uh, the number of words uh, they use uh, increases. And let us assume that we are interested in this process and um, assume we are studying just a, just a um, native language of uh, a person, so we are interested in uh, some data like age and number of words. Uh, and uh, we have we have some data. Assume that we have a group of uh, children of different ages. And uh, we are just, uh, we, we, uh, we uh, use some uh, tests that allows us to estimate how many uh, words uh, a particular kid uh, knows. And uh, we just collect uh, some data in this way. And we have, uh, we have some results. Something like this. Uh, and uh, we are interested uh, in the relation between these two variables. And uh, if uh, I want to visualize uh, these two variables, uh, I can uh, make uh, a graph that is called scatter plot. 
uh, scatter plot. And uh, this is a simple graph uh, when each point corresponds to uh, one observation. Uh, for example, uh, we put H on the horizontal axis and number of words on the vertical axis and No, oh, this is not an H. Let me put uh, some numbers. And uh, I have to put uh, this point uh, here. And this point here and so on. Uh, so I will put 375, it is somewhere here, four, it is somewhere here, and then uh, I have my data that looks like uh, like this picture. So, Oops. Let me use the same color for all points. It will be like this. And uh, this uh, picture uh, gives us some information about the relation between these two variables. Uh, for example, by looking at this picture, uh, even if we don't know uh, the actual meaning of these variables, of course, if, if, well, if we have this, uh, the understanding of uh, how people uh, learn language, we understand that uh, as age increases, number of words increases as well. But uh, we can extract this information uh, from this picture. Uh, we see that uh, for values, for large values of age, uh, relatively large, larger than one half, uh, we have uh, re relatively large values of uh, the, uh, the second variable number of words. So we see that in this part of the picture, uh, these uh, points um, are higher than in these parts of picture. And uh, so uh, it means that uh, we have some correlation between these two variables. So when one variable is large, uh, then another variable is also large and vice versa. And uh, this is called a positive correlation uh, when we have uh, when we have this uh, this thing. Uh, if one is large, then another is large. So um, uh, let me draw several uh, several pictures and let us discuss uh, what kind of correlation can we uh, see on each picture. So uh, I will use. Uh, generic names for variables, just X and Y. And uh, I will draw several pictures. And this is one picture. Picture number one. Uh, picture number two. number three and picture number four something like this and uh, let us discuss what do you think about uh, correlation between uh, the corresponding variables uh, for example uh, where uh, on these pictures the correlation is the largest, where the relation between two variables is uh, is most visible, most obvious. Number third picture. 
uh, on the third picture, uh, right? Uh, you see that uh, at this third picture, uh, at this th th third uh, third picture, uh, data points lie along some straight line, very close to this straight line. Uh, there are some uh, deviations from this straight line, but anyway, uh, they are pretty close to uh, to it. And um, we can say that uh, on this third picture. It is almost perfect uh, linear relationship between two uh, variables. Um, and it means that correlation is high, is large. Okay, uh, now let me ask uh, where this correlation is um, uh, is uh, very close to zero, the closest to zero on which picture? The second. Uh, picture number second. Uh, yeah, we don't have any correlation here at least, uh, at least if we just um, analyze this picture visually. Uh, we see that whatever value of variable x uh, we choose, uh, values of variable y uh, lie uh, somewhere at this uh, at this interval. Uh, if I have uh, this uh, value of x, or if I have this value of x, or if I have this value of x, uh, it is on average the value of y is the same for all values of x. We don't have any visible relation like when x is large, then y is large as well, or when x is large, then y is small. More or less, uh, y does not depend on x. Uh, so if I uh, would try to find some straight line that approximates my data, this straight line will be horizontal, meaning that uh, y does not depend on x. Of course, individual point varies. Uh, the, val the value of uh, vertical coordinate, the value of y, for individual point uh, varies uh, for different value of x. But we don't have any visible trend. And in this case, uh, we say that there is no correlation. And so we can expect that uh, correlation is uh, close to zero. Okay, uh, what about this uh, picture number four? What can you say about correlation here? It's negative. Uh, it's negative, and what does it mean? Uh, that the larger is x, the smaller is y. Yeah, uh, we see that uh, if we look at uh, the points of relatively large values of x so somewhere here, uh, we see that these points are in the bottom part of the image. Uh, so the uh, y values are uh, small. Uh, and uh, vice versa, for small values of x, we have large value of, uh, values of y. So this is, this is negative correlation. Uh, the larger x, the smaller y. Okay, uh, we see that uh, these four pictures demonstrate different, uh, different levels of this uh, relationship between variables. Uh, and here we have positive correlation, but not very large. Uh, here the correlation is larger than here. Uh, here the correlation is uh, almost zero. 
and here the correlation is negative. And uh, this is our just uh, result of our visual inspection. Even if uh, we didn't ever uh, heard of the word correlation, uh, we understand that these pictures uh, convey some information about this relation between these two variables. And uh, now uh, I'm trying to quantify uh, this, uh, this idea of uh, correlation. And uh, this can be done uh, in different ways. And uh, I will use, uh, uh, I will discuss now uh, the most uh, the most known uh, uh, correlation coefficient that is called uh, Pearson's correlation. Pearson's correlation coefficient. And uh, to introduce this Pearson's correlation coefficient, let me uh, begin with uh, the following. Let me assume that I have some data points. Something like this. And uh, first thing uh, I want to do is to, um, I'm interested uh, not uh, in the uh, absolute values of these variables, but I'm interested in the deviation of uh, these values from the mean value. So I'm interested in uh, if it is true that for a particular point, uh, the value of X is larger than average value uh, of um, x for the whole picture. And uh, to do so, let me uh, find uh, the corresponding average values. So average value of x uh, will be somewhere here. And average value of y will be somewhere here. And now I will. Um, consider uh, the deviation of uh, value of uh, x and y from, uh, from the corresponding uh, average. Let me put some more points to make picture more clear. Something like this. And uh, now let us consider the following formula. Uh, so, uh, so for each point, uh, for example, let us consider, let us begin with, okay, uh, I, I want to put some numeric values somewhere at this uh, plot, assume that one, two, three, four, five. And here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And Uh, consider some point, uh, for example, this point. And uh, this point uh, is a point with coordinates uh, like 4, 8, right? And uh, then uh, I want to find the difference uh, between the corresponding coordinates and uh, corresponding mean. So in my case, uh, x bar equals to three, y bar equals to four. And uh, I have a point, uh, let, me, let me say that this point uh, is point x1, y1. And um, 
x1 equals to 4, y1 equals to 8. And uh, this point uh, contributes to this uh, sum uh, value that is uh, calculated as uh, 4 minus 3 times 8 minus 4. So it is negative 4. And uh, this is uh, the value of uh, this product. And then I have to repeat the same procedure for each point in the data set and uh, sum all the points, uh, sum all the products uh, that we obtain. Uh, by the way, uh, it is not true that it is negative, it should be positive. Because four is larger than three. It should be just number four. Uh, is it clear how this formula works? So this is just a summation sign. It just says that uh, I have to find uh, this uh, product for each point and then make a sum of all these products. So here n is number of points. Are there any questions about this formula? Okay, if there are no questions. Uh, maybe, hmm, maybe, yes. maybe I have. Uh, yes, yes. I here is like just starting, ah, because, well, we, we take first, it's like the uh, or, just, uh, ordinal number of x's and y's, right? Mm. Could you repeat, please? Uh, well, I, I uh, don't uh, really can uh, explicitly, explicitly understand to myself what I means in this formula. I I is just number of uh, number of a point. Uh, uh, so uh, x y uh, mm -hmm. y y is coordinates of uh, i points uh, point number number i. I see. So I see. this is this is the summation over all points. So for each point, uh, we find this product. And then we sum, uh, sum all of them. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. More questions? Okay, now uh, let us discuss uh, which, uh, uh, which terms in this sum uh, will be positive and which will be negative. Uh, what is the sign uh, of, of this sum? For example, let us consider this, this part of the picture. Uh, what can you say about the sign of uh, products for these points that, that lie in this, in this part of the picture? Oh, sorry. Uh, it seems that something wrong. Uh, so let me repeat uh, the question. Uh, let us consider this quarter of uh, the picture. Uh, what can you say about the sign of uh, the products that we consider for all points in this quarter? Is it positive or negative? Positive. Mm, it is positive. So let us... Um, redraw them as green points. What can I say about this point that lies straight on this line?
So as it is, as it lies on on, on this vertical line, yes, it it uh, gives us zero uh, in the product because uh, we have this difference between the x coordinate and x bar, and for this point, uh, it is just zero. So here, uh, both uh, both um, both terms in this product are positive because. Uh, value of uh, coordinates x and y are larger than corresponding uh, than corresponding mean. Um, what about this point? Does it give a positive or negative contribution to this sum? Negative. It is negative, yes. Uh, why negative? Why? Because... Sorry. Mm -hmm. Masha, you began to speak. Okay. Uh, why is larger? So in the right part, we would get a positive number and um, X would be lower. So we get negative mm -hmm. sign here. Yeah, uh, this difference is negative and this difference is positive. And product of positive and negative numbers uh, are uh, is uh, negative. So in fact, all points in this region and in this region will give us negative contribution. So let me use red color here. And what about this region? The last quarter. It's positive because of both, uh, how do you say, Rasmus in English? Um, uh, both parts of the, uh, of the product are mm -hmm. negative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, in this part, uh, in this part, products are positive because both multipliers uh, are uh, are negatives, and product of two negative numbers is negative. And now uh, let us look at this picture. Uh, you see that due to the fact that our points are located uh, in in this way, so uh, we have this uh, this this kind of positive correlation that we have a lot of points here and here, and uh, we have smaller number of points here and here, uh, due to the shape of, uh, of this figure, uh, we see that uh, we can expect that the sum will be positive. Just because we have uh, a lot of points here and here, and we understand that, for example, value of product for this point uh, by, absolute, um, by absolute value is larger than products for these points, just because both, uh, both multipliers are larger in absolute value. Uh, so um, we can expect that this formula catches some information about correlation between two variables. Uh, basically this, uh, this thing is called, uh, this is not yet, uh, this is not yet, uh, correlation. Uh, this thing uh, is called, if I, uh, if I divide it by number of points, if I do something like this, uh, then uh, this thing is called covariance. And uh, it measures uh, this idea of correlation, but not exactly in the way that we are interested in. Uh, what, uh, what is the problem with covariance? Um, let me assume that I change uh, the units in which I measure uh, one of these variable. For example, uh, I change uh, the units of measure of X in such a way that all the values of x will be multiplied by 10. 
Yeah, this is like uh, I measured something in meters, and then I just uh, rewrite the whole column, uh, measuring now the same things in centimeters, just because uh, one centimeter uh, is. In this case, I will multiply it by 100. Okay, multiply by 100 from meters to centimeters. Uh, but uh, if we return to our pictures and our initial question, we understand that if I just change the units of measurement, uh, the, uh, the strength of relation between two variables should not change. If two variables uh, were, uh, were uh, uh, correlated strongly, then they have to become correlated strongly. If there were no correlation be between two variables, uh, it should be no correlation between two variables. Uh, so basically, uh, the problem with covariance is that it is not it is not invariant uh, under these three scalings. Uh, so. If uh, we multiply all values of x by 10, uh, what happens with covariance? How do you think? Let's look at this formula. What happens with covariance if we multiply all values of xi by 10? What happens with x bar? x bar is also multiplied by 10, and the difference between xi and x bar will also be multiplied by 10 in this mm -hmm. case. Yes, uh, exactly. Basically, if we multiply everything by 10, it is just like uh, we, we multiply all these values by 10 and the picture stays the same. So we just rescale the x axis. And of course, it means that uh, these differences will be also multiplied by 10. And uh, then it means that uh, this uh, covariance will be multiplied by 10. Uh, so, and uh, this is this is the property that we want to avoid. Uh, we want uh, to be sure that if we just change the units of measurement, uh, the, the relation between two variables will not change. And uh, to produce uh, some value that will catch the idea of this relation, but uh, will be invariant uh, to these multiplications, to these rescalings, uh, we have to divide this covariance uh, by uh, standard deviations uh, of uh, our uh, our values. So basically, uh, the correlation coefficient, the uh, Pearson's correlation coefficient between two variables, is uh, covariance uh, divided by a standard deviation of x multiplied by standard deviation of y. Uh, now, uh, let us look at this formula. Uh, what happens uh, with standard deviation of x if I multiply x by 10? What happens with standard deviation?
Note that standard deviation is a square root uh, of variance. Uh, and uh, variance uh, is something that depends on x quadratically. Uh, variance of x, let me recall it is It is this thing. Uh, so if I multiply x by 10, uh, then uh, what happens with variance? Uh, these differences again uh, will be multiplied by 10, but uh, then um, I have a square of these differences. Uh, so what happens with uh, what happens with variance? Variance will be multiplied by 100. 100, yes. Uh, this is due to this, uh, this is due to square here. Uh, but then uh, to find standard deviation, we get a square root uh, of variance. So variance will be multiplied by uh, 100, but square root of variance. Uh, so basically, uh, square root of new variance equals to square root of 100 times by old variance. And uh, this is like 100, uh, square root of 100 times square root of old variance. And this is 10 times square root of old variance. So a standard deviation will be again multiplied by 10. And now if we look at this formula, we see that covariance will be multiplied by 10 and standard deviation of X will be multiplied by 10. So uh, the ratio will not change. So correlation does not, does not change if you rescale variable X and if you rescale variable Y. And uh, this is uh, this is Pearson's uh, correlation correlation coefficient. And uh, let me state some properties of uh, this uh, Pearson's correlation coefficient. Uh, it is usually denoted by uh, letter R small. So let me use, this is R. And uh, if uh, R equals, uh, uh, first of all, R uh, is some value that lies on the segment from negative one to one. Uh, and if R equals to one, it means that this is perfect linear relationship. Something like this. perfect linear dependence. And uh, on the other hand, uh, if R is negative, uh, then uh, it means that we have negative correlation. And if R is negative one, then again, it means that there is a perfect linear dependence, but uh, in this case, negative. So in this case, we have something like this.
and uh, this is uh, r that is equal to negative one. And uh, if r equals to zero, it means that there is no correlation. Uh, and uh, the picture probably looks like the following, but not necessary. It is possible to draw different pictures uh, for which there is no correlation. For example, uh, let me consider a picture like this. Something like this. Uh, in this case, uh, we don't have correlation between two variables, x and y. Uh, why, uh, why, uh, why do you think uh, I, I can claim this? Why do you think that I'm, I'm sure that there is no correlation between uh, these two variables? Because there is no straight line that would fit this kind of scatter. I don't know how to say it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. also because it is symmetrical, so... Um, I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it, it probably would like be around zero or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, as we discussed, uh, correlation, uh, well, when we say that we have a correlation between two numeric variables, it means that we have something like monotonic dependence, something like that if x is large, then y is also large, or vice versa. Uh, but uh, on this picture, we don't have uh, any monotonic dependence. Uh, at, at this region, uh, we see that large values of x uh, means that um, values of y are also large. But uh, at this part, uh, we have negative, uh, negative relation between these variables. So when we sum everything, uh, we uh, will not have uh, any correlation. And in fact, uh, indeed, this is, uh, this is due to the symmetry of this picture. But uh, also, it should be noted that even despite the fact that we see some relation between y and x, we understand that they are not independent of each other. Uh, if we know that, for example, if we know that x is uh, near zero, we understand that y is also near zero. And if we know if uh, x, um, if we know that e e x uh, is somewhere here, we understand that value of y should be somewhere here, uh, not very close to zero. But uh, there is no uh, correlation uh, on this picture as well. Uh, so correlation catches uh, only these uh, linear-like or monotonic dependence. And uh, the next property is that we discussed earlier that uh, air does not depend, does not change if we rescale variables. So, Correlation coefficient, for example, uh, if I multiply x and y by some numbers, then uh, correlation coefficient between them is uh, the same as previously. And <clears throat> This is, uh, this is what we can say about Pearson's correlation. Uh, are there questions so far? Okay, uh, and then um, we can discuss some other correlation coefficients uh, for example, 
So they are co called rank correlations. And uh, let me give you an example that motivates uh, why we may need it. Let me assume that uh, I have a dependence between two variables that looks like the following. Something like this. Uh, how do you think? Can we say that there is a perfect correlation between X and Y? How do you think? How do you feel? It won't be perfect because at first you have like a uh, large difference between x's and large difference between, not so large difference between uh, y coordinates. And then as uh, you like, yes, as you move, you see that there is uh, the smaller and smaller uh, difference between x's, but mm -hmm. the difference between y's becomes larger and larger. Uh, yes, on one hand, uh, on one hand, we can say that this is a not perfect correlation between uh, between these two variables because the slope uh, changes. And this is basically uh, to say that this slope changes uh, basically is the same uh, as to say that there is no linear relationship because uh, if uh, if we have just something linear, it means that slope does not change for all points but on the other hand we in a sense we have perfect correlation um can anybody uh, uh formulate why why we probably want to say uh that in this data we also have perfect correlation with some different meaning with a little bit different meaning of term correlation i don't I'm, I'm not asking about uh, yeah, Pearson's correlation now, but just about your your intuition, your feeling. Why is probably calculated as like X in some power? How do you say mm -hmm. stepping? Yes, power. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, like Y, y is X squared. The, the square yeah. of X. Yeah, something like this. And um, uh, we see that these points are uh, indeed uh, uh, very close to some, to some uh, functional dependence. And uh, what is important, let me, uh, let me recall to uh, our initial uh, discussion of what correlation is. Uh, we said that uh, we, we see positive correlation if for larger values of X, we have larger values of Y. And uh, of course, uh, for example, for, uh, for this picture, uh, it, is not, uh, it is not true strictly. We have, uh, we have a pairs, of, uh, pairs of points for which uh, the statement that larger value of X corresponds to larger value of Y is not true, for example, for these two points, it is not true. But we understand that we have some trend and in this trend, uh, larger values of Y, uh, uh, larger value of, uh, values of X corresponds to larger values of Y on average. But it is not perfect. But here uh, we have this uh, statement to be perfectly correct. For larger values of X, we have larger values of Y. Here we have, uh, we have perfect monotonicity, perfect increasing. Uh, so uh, probably we are interested in some mathematical tool that allows us to catch uh, these perfect correlations uh, as well. And uh, this can be done with so-called rank correlations. Uh, for example, we can consider 
Spearman's correlation. Uh, and uh, this uh, Spearman's correlation can be calculated in the following way. Let us, uh, let me assume that I have data like this, x, y, Okay, um, uh, to discuss Spearman's correlation, I have to discuss uh, rank transformation first. Uh, if, um, if, I, if, if I, ha I have some data, some numeric variable, something like this. Uh, this is my uh, numeric variable x. Uh, then I can uh, make the so-called rank transformation uh, with this variable. Uh, it means uh, the following. Let me sort all values in this column, in this uh, sort all, all values of this variable. And I will get something like two, three, seven, 10, 100. Uh, then uh, let me uh, put uh, I just uh, I just put uh, the index of each element. I mean this is this is the first element, this is second, this is third, this is fourth, this is fifth. Uh, so I just enumerate uh, these elements after they are sorted. So element number one is the smallest one. And then I rearrange my uh, values just uh, to return the initial order. So I will rearrange them. And I will keep these red numbers that associate each element. So I will get the following row. Uh, this is one, this is four, this is two, this is three, and this is five. And uh, this new uh, this new variable, let me denote it by rank of x. This is the result of this rank transformation. So uh, as an input, we have uh, this series of values and the output is this series of values. The output is, um, the output consists of only integer numbers. And um, this is, these are integers from one to number of elements in their initial series. Now uh, let us uh, consider some, again, two, data set with two variables. Let me assume that uh, my variables are something like this, one, two, three, four. And for y, I have one, one four, nine, 16. Uh, what can you say about rank transformation of X and rank transformation of Y? So uh, if I have if I have the data like this, uh, which is which closely resembles uh, the, this part of the picture, because it is just a graph uh, part of the parabola. 
Uh, what can you say about rank uh, of X and rank of Y? They will be the same. Mm, yes, uh, they will be just one, two, three, four. Mm, indeed, we have just these values are, uh, if, if we sort them, uh, they, well, they are already sorted. So I just uh, should append ranks to each of these values and that's all. Uh, and actually what is Spearman's correlation? Spearman's correlation is uh, the same as Pearson's correlation, uh, but applied to ranks. And for this data set, uh, how do you think what is uh, Spearman's correlation between these two variables? One. One. Yes, because uh, we just have perfect correlation between ranks. And uh, this, uh, this Spearman's correlation, it, it works only with the order of uh, the points. So it only asks questions uh, about which value is larger, X or um, if we if if we consider two points, uh, for which uh, for which of two points x a is larger than x of the other point, so basically uh, this uh, rank correlations uh, Spearm uh, Spearman's correlation is one of the possible rank correlation. They work only with the order of points, not their numeric values. For example, if I change uh, this number sixteen. Uh, to number like 16,000, nothing will change uh, from the point of view of this uh, Pearson's correlation because the ranks will be the same. And uh, another rank correlation is candles correlation, candles tau. And uh, this uh, candles correlation can be found in the following way. I have some data. And uh, I can consider a pair of points. Uh, for example, I pick this point and this point. Mm. And uh, this pair uh, uh, pair can be good or bad. Uh, the pair is good if a uh, larger value of X corresponds to a larger value of Y. So it is like this. And uh, point and pair is bad otherwise. And uh, then we just find uh, the following value. Uh, we just find number of good pairs minus number of bad pairs uh, divide by a number of all pairs. And uh, this is uh, this is uh, Kendall's correlation. And uh, what about the uh, the cases when they are equal, these two points. Ignore only them. Qualified. Ignore them. Uh huh. Okay. 
uh, okay, let us re uh, let us return to this picture. What is uh, what is uh, Kendall's correlation for this picture? Also one because all the pairs are good. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yes. Uh, if, if if your if your data uh, is perfectly monotonic. So larger value of X corresponds to larger value of Y. Then you have only these good pairs. And it means that uh, this part is zero. And uh, this part uh, is equal to number of all pairs. So two will be one. Uh, so these run correlations are, okay, uh, again, let me, let me return to this uh, to this uh, Pearson's correlation. In Pearson's correlation, uh, perfect correlation means perfect linear dependence. Uh, in run correlations, we don't need uh, this linearity. Uh, our dependence can be nonlinear, but uh, it will be. Uh, we uh, would say that this correlation is perfect if it is perfectly monotonic. So if larger values of X corresponds to larger value of Y or vice versa, uh, or, or perfectly anti-monotonic, anti monotonic but decreasing if uh, we have something, something like this. Uh, in, in this case, uh, Spearman's correlation and Kendall's correlation would be negative one. Um, the usual question uh, is uh, where, uh, when to use Spearman's correlation and when to use Kendall's correlation. I don't have any answer on this question. Um, uh, I think that in most of cases, Spearman's correlation is um, uh, is just more familiar because Spearman's correlation can be seen as a version of Pearson's correlation and uh, and the, the, the intuition about Spearman's correlation is the same as intuition about Pearson's correlation. Uh, but uh, Kendall's is rather nice. Uh, at least I, I like the definition. It is very simple. And, um, and uh, in some applications, uh, you can meet with this uh, Kendall's correlation as well. Uh, so, Uh, are there are there any questions about these correlations? Okay, I think we can make a ten minutes break and then uh, we can return to do some exercises. Okay, so uh, of course uh, we have an R function to find correlations. And let me show how it works. Let us create uh, a couple of variables. Um, let me put some values. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So I just plotted uh, the scatter plot for these two variables. And uh, now to find yeah, uh, correlation coefficient. But uh, by the way, how do you think? Um, what is the correlation coefficient for these two variables? What is the value of correlation coefficient? At least, is it positive or negative? Positive. 
Um, can you guess uh, guess the exact value? Oh, 0.6. Oh, 0.6. Okay, let us test uh, your intuition. Mm. Oh, 0.76. Uh, slightly larger than you guess, but anyway. Uh, and uh, this is as simple uh, as this. Uh, so we don't have to remember this formula, but it is a good idea to understand it anyway. And we can test uh, for some things that I said that if I multiply both variables, it will not change uh, the correlation at all. So uh, we know that we can do this element-wise uh, element uh, arithmetic with our vectors. And we see here that uh, it doesn't change the correlation. And If I uh, find correlation between a variable and uh, itself, it is also it is always one. This just because we have a perfect linear relationship, and uh, I can do some other linear relationship like something like this. And again, if this coefficient is positive, uh, it means that. Uh, we have a straight line on the graph. So if I just plot it, you see that this is just a straight line. And for straight line, the correlation is positive and uh, it is equal to one. And uh, if it is something like this, and then correlation is negative one because I have uh, this decreasing uh, decreasing relation between these two variables. And um, now let us uh, look at uh, a bit more you know, complex example. Uh, let us consider, for example, something like this and let us add one point here um, so uh, now this correlation is positive it is all dot 75 clear positive correlation for this data uh, but now let us add uh, only one point to this data set and this point is something like this. Uh, what do you think? What happens uh, with correlation coefficient uh, after we added this, this point? So probably uh, it can be uh, useful to draw the graph first. And how do you think uh, what happens with the correlation coefficient? It becomes smaller. It becomes not only smaller, uh, it becomes negative. And you see that it is very close to negative one. Okay. Uh, why it is close to negative one? Uh, that's because if we look at this graph, 
we basically see this this collection of points uh, and this one point and if we are trying to find uh, some trend line we just have to draw this trend line in this decreasing way and it corresponds to negative correlation and all points are very close to this trend line at least if we look at this picture in this scale uh, in this scale it is uh, really 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 close and it means that correlation is indeed close to a negative one and uh, this effect uh, that uh, we, we had some data set for this data set, uh, we had uh, positive correlation and rather large, but we added only one point that is outlier for our data. So it does not follow uh, the general trend that we see here. Yeah, it, is, it is somewhere very, very, very close to the rest of the data. And uh, this outlier, only one outlier, it changes everything. And uh, with this outlier, uh, this correlation coefficient changes dramatically. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, it is possible that there is some outliers in your data. Um, for example, these outliers can, can uh, appear in your data due to some errors, measurement errors, errors in, in how you encode your data. Probably this data encoding, if it uh, if uh, it involved some uh, some manual labor, then um, it is possible that people make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And most of the data initially have some manual labor in them. And um, so if our statistical tool uh, change its results uh, in the presence of, of these outliers, uh, this can be an indesirable property of this tool. And uh, uh, we can say that this correlation coefficient that we used uh, now, this is Pearson's correlation, that it is not robust with respect to these outliers. Uh, but let us try to repeat the same experiment, uh, but with different type of uh, correlation coefficient. Uh, let us use instead of uh, instead of uh, uh, Pearson's coefficient, uh, with, which is the default. Uh, let us use Spearman. Uh, first, we see that for initial data, uh, Spearman's correlation is rather close to Pearson's correlation. Uh, but uh, what happens uh, if we add this outlier? Let us use Spearman correlation. Okay, uh, we see that uh, the result changed, but not so dramatically. Uh, here uh, we obtained the correlation that is very close to negative one, uh, but here we still have positive correlation despite the fact that there is uh, this outlier in our data. Uh, in fact, if we add more points to uh, the part uh, of the data that is, uh, that is not outlier, like let us add some, some more points here. And again, negative 100, negative 100. Uh, you see that, uh, ah, sorry, this should be like this. 
You see that in, in this case, uh, sperm is correlated decreased, uh, the, the, the value of decrease of sperm is correlation is even less. Uh, and uh, anyway, what is important is that even in the presence of outlier, Spearman's correlation at least detects uh, the sign of the correlation. It detects that the sign is positive. And uh, thus we see that the Spearman's correlation uh, is more robust with respect to outliers. And this is actually uh, the general property of this, uh, of this, uh, um, rank methods, uh, non-parametric methods that relies uh, not on the numeric values of uh, variables, but on uh, on their rank, on uh, where there are if we sort our data set. And this is uh, some advantage of this um, rank methods, but their disadvantage uh, their disadvantage is that uh, they are not so sensitive uh, because again we ignore numeric information and uh, look only on the order information only on the rank information uh, anyway yeah this is the first example that uh, i wanted to discuss with you and there is a second example Let me generate two normally distributed random variables. Uh, so this uh, R norm um, function generates um, uh, a vector that uh, contains independent uh, independent samples from some normal distribution. So let us plot this data. And it looks like this. Uh, so you see that we generated these uh, variables x and y uh, as just they are just they are independent. They, they, they are generated as independent random variables, as samples from two, gener two independent random variables. This uh, R norm does not uh, affect this R norm and vice versa. Uh, but what can you say about uh, the correlation between these two variables, between X and Y? Let us find this correlation. Oh, sorry, core. Uh, you see that it is positive 0.26. Why does it happen? We generated them as independent values. Why we see this positive correlation? How do you think? Because both um, values are normally distributed, so... Mm, so what uh, we... Uh, this these are independent uh, independent normally distributed uh, values. So when we created this value y, we didn't feed it any information about values of x. So we can think about this uh, random number generator as like we 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 have some large box with uh, with uh, balls uh, and on each ball there is a number written and these uh, our norm gets uh, 10 balls with uh, with replacement 
and uh, it creates variable x. And then we independently from this R norm uh, generate a, another 10, uh, 10 normal, normally distributed random uh, variables and we put it into variable y. Why we have positive correlation. If we have correlation, it doesn't mean that our, uh, our variables are dependent on each other. Mm. But this is what we uh, this is what we actually initially this is what we are looking for. We are interested basically if if we return to the beginning of our lesson, we started with a question like, is it true that uh, that kids who are uh, uh, who, uh, that uh, uh, older uh, that elder kids uh, know more words. Yes, uh, our initial question is like: Is it true that uh, large value of one variable means that we can expect large value of another variable? Like, is it true that uh, number of words that uh, kid know increases with age? Something like this. Uh, so if we here, uh, we understand that we generated two variables as to be independent, but we have some positive correlation between the results. So what, uh, why does it happen and what can we do to, to overcome this, this problem? Can we say that this correlation like is not large enough? Uh, that this correlation is not large enough? Yeah, that it should be, I don't know, closer to one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, it is not very large. Uh, it is not very large. And actually this picture suggests that uh, correlation is not very large. It is not just near the straight line. But anyway, it is positive. It is not zero. Uh, even despite the fact that our variables created from independent, independent random numbers. Uh, in fact, uh, the solution is that uh, now we discussed correlation uh, that as some property of uh, some samples. Uh, but again, uh, this is like uh, this is like we discussed previously. In statistics, uh, we are usually interested not in the properties of uh, the samples themselves. We are not interested in the properties of our data, uh, but we are interested in uh, the properties uh, of some underlying distribution that from from population uh, that generated this data. And in this case, uh, we can say that. Uh, this that the corresponding um, that the corresponding population uh, that generated our data and that in, in population uh, these values are independent. Uh, but uh, it doesn't mean that uh, the values that we actually observed uh, that uh, they will give us uh, exactly zero correlation. Basically, it is highly unlikely to get exactly zero something just because well we have some randomness in in our data generation and we understand that this correlation is also something that is random if i repeat the same experiment let me just copy and and just start it uh, again i generate i plot and i find correlation and we see that now correlation is different and it is smaller. And we can repeat it uh, once again. And uh, again, we have some other correlation. And uh, let me repeat it once again. Okay, uh, it should be negative at some point, but I'm not lucky today. 
Well, it is positive. It should be negative. Probability theory says that it should be negative at some point because uh, everything is. Okay, it seems that uh, I just get five heads in a row. Uh, but okay, it is possible. Let me try it again. I don't know. It should be negative at some point. <laughs> Yeah, it is negative. So uh, in in this experiment, you see that we we repeat the same the same generation, and we have a different uh, correlation. It can be positive, it can be negative, and we just um, we just have to understand that this correlation is also a kind of random value. And uh, what we are interested in usually is uh, the fact that our initial uh, that our initial variables are generated from um, correlated random variables. Uh, now uh, they are not correlated, and uh, we can do statistical test. Uh, so this is called correlation test. And in this correlation test, uh, null hypothesis is that uh, is that in the population no correlation in the population. And alternative. that there is some correlation, negative or positive. Uh, when I say population here, I mean that we have some probabilistic data generation process. We can think about this process as that you pick a random person and ask them question, or you pick a random sentence in your text and uh, find some features of this, uh, of this sentence or you generate uh, you generate some variables using uh, using some random distributions like this. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, we have this null hypothesis and this alternative. And uh, to test it, we can use a core test. And let us use uh, these values x and y that we that we already used. We know that these x and y are obtained from independent variables. So there is no correlation between, between them in population. Uh, and let us uh, look what uh, core test uh, says us. How would you interpret, how would you interpret this result? That it is unlikely that uh, so we don't have enough ev evidence to state that these um, populations are a coral uh, yes a correlated mm -hmm. yeah well, we uh, we have a rather large p value and it means that we cannot reject null hypothesis. Uh, so uh, it means that okay we, we see some correlation in the data. But uh, it doesn't mean that uh, that there is a correlation in the in the corresponding population. So it doesn't mean that we really that we really see um, the correlation in that well, the, the correlation that we see is can be explained just by chance, just by the fact that we generated some random data, and uh, this random data just by accidentally are correlated. But it does not mean that they are essentially correlated. It doesn't mean that in the process that were used to generate this data, that uh, this correlation uh, exists. 
Uh, now let me uh, uh, let me show you uh, some process where correlation exists. Uh, let me create, for example, uh, one thousand one thousand points, and let me. Uh, so in this uh, in this case, uh, I do the following. Uh, I generate a variable x uh, by uh, picking one thousand uh, normally distributed random numbers, and then I generate a number y uh, variable y in the following way. Uh, first, I pick a variable x and multiply all values by all dot one. Uh, if I keep if I keep it like this, uh, then what kind of correlation uh, I will get? What is the correlation for this data? One. One, yes, because it is a perfect linear relationship. Uh, but uh, I add uh, some noise. So for each uh, variable, uh, for each number that is stored in this variable, I add, uh, again, randomly generated noise. Uh, and uh, after that, you know, let, us, uh, let us plot. Plot the data. Uh, you see that uh, on the graph, it is rather difficult to, uh, to find that there is some correlation. Uh, and if I... If I find the correlation value, it would be rather small. Uh, but in this case, uh, our data generation process uh, generate the, uh, so th there is some correlation in our data generation process. So uh, you see here that we explicitly uh, used variable x to generate uh, values of variable y. Due to this uh, noise term, uh, this is not a perfect uh, perfect correlation. This is not a perfect linear relationship be between two variables. We added rather large noise to the variable y. But nevertheless, these two variables are uh, these two variables are correlated, not, not their samples are correlated but the random variables that generated these samples, so they're the right-hand side of this, uh, of this equation, they are correlated. It means that if we know uh, which value, uh, if we know the value of uh, this, this variable, this variable x, we know something about uh, this variable. Not exactly, there is a large noise uh, added, as I said. But at least we have some information that if x is large, then y on average is also large. And uh, now uh, if I apply this core test, uh, then you see that now this correlation, it is rather small, but uh, now it is uh, significant. So here we can reject null hypothesis, and we can say that uh, indeed we see uh, we, that, that the positive correlation that we see in this uh, in this data uh, it corresponds to some correlation in the corresponding population in the process that generated this data. In fact, this is uh, this is the general story about statistics. You have some uh, you have some data, but you think not about the data, but about the process that generated this data. And uh, this process it can be linguistic process, it can be some process that involves uh, people, it can be any kind of process. But you think about it as um, kind of probabilistic model uh, that that works with 
random variables and uh, these random variables can be dependent, can be independent and so on. So we, we're thinking about it in terms of uh, probability. Uh, so this is, uh, this is this story about correlation test. Uh, so basically, if you have some data and you found a correlation between some variables and uh, you want to interpret this correlation, like you want to make any claim about the process that generated this data, you have at least uh, you have to uh, test its significance using this correlation test. Otherwise, uh, the correlation that you found can be just uh, a coincidence, just something that is that have purely probabilistic nature, not related to any real life process that you're interested in. Uh, so this is the second thought that um, I wanted to discuss with you. Are there any questions? Question. Yes, yes, sure. How does this test work? It, uh, does it like take uh, some random samples from the variables and then try to tries to calculate the correlation and then um i don't know calculates the share of mm -hmm. cases where correlation was found uh something like this uh yes uh, uh actually it is known um uh so uh again uh, it works it works more or less like you said but it doesn't uh, do actual simulations. Uh, it uses uh, it uses some uh, formulas that uh, allows you to estimate it. But the idea is exactly as you said. It uh, it uses the information about uh, your variables x and y, number of elements, uh, number of elements in each sample. It should be equal, of course, to find this correlation. So sample size, and it uses uh, some information about a standard deviation. And then uh, it uses some formulas that allows it to estimate how, uh, how what is the distribution of correlation coefficients provided that null hypothesis holds. So basically, this is like, um, this is like the following. So let me repeat this, this experiment 10,000 10, times. I know that people do not uh, write in our uh, in this way, but uh, I cannot I cannot educate myself to to do it in correct ways. Mm. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I found uh, the I, I did uh, I did my uh, test. Um, sorry, not test. Uh, I, I did my experiment uh, one thousand times, and uh, each time I generated randomly two random uh, random variables x and y uh, of size uh, one thousand, and uh, then I found a correlation between them. And uh, here x and y are independent by just by construction. And then uh, I plot the correlation that I can obtain uh, with this uh, with this experiment. And you see that this 
correlations that I can obtain uh, is uh, from minus all dot one to all dot one or something like this. And uh, if I did this experiment, I see that my correlation, okay, it is, it is quite close to this, uh, this parts of the image. So uh, probability to get uh, this value or even larger correlation, provided that there are no uh, correlation in the data generation process uh, is, a, is rather small. Uh, so this, the, this, prob this probability is this p-value and uh, this is fine. Uh, this is this can be found by analyzing this graph. So I just put the value that are actually obtained. It will be somewhere here, and uh, I find that probability to get uh, this kind of data or even uh, larger with larger absolute value is rather small. So this this is what this is the distribution that is used here. I see. Thank you. Uh, it it doesn't do uh, this simulation because uh, these the parameters of this distribution can be found theoretically, but the idea is this one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. More questions? Okay. Now let us look at some data. Uh, not not very linguistic data, but I have I, I like this data set. Uh, it is something about uh, education. Let me let me try to find it. Oops. Uh, uh, so this is a data set uh, that has um, uh, some grades, some standardized um, standardized uh, results of uh, various uh, high school students in USA. Probably, I'm not sure about. Uh, about the exact source of this data, but uh, in this data we see that there are several numeric variables and we may be interested in finding the correlation between them. So let me... Uh, so this is how I can find the correlation between two variables. Uh, but if we have uh, several variables, we can be interested in uh, the pairwise correlation between them. Uh, and I'd like to find all pairwise correlations. I'm not sure that uh, this function can do it. No, X might must be numeric. Um, so this is called correlation matrix. Uh, the thing that I'm trying to uh, to find. I probably have to read documentation because I don't remember. Hmm. 
use a numeric matrix or data frame. Uh, I see. Uh, it says, uh, in fact, the problem is that in my data frame, uh, there are not only numeric variables, but also some categorical variables. You see, this is factors. And let us keep only No, it doesn't work like this. Okay, let me let me use tidyverse. Select. I want to remove all non-numeric, uh, all non-numeric. Uh, columns and uh, then I will use core function for this data set and uh, here is um, here is the correlation uh, and you see that there is correlation between um, the, the uh, this is correlation matrix and first of all on the diagonal of this matrix, we have correlation one, because correlation of any value with itself is always one. And uh, now you see that there is correlation between uh, our grades, for example, correlation between math and read, math and write. And of course, this is symmetric matrix because correlation is symmetric thing. If you just um, swap, two variables, uh, it doesn't change. And uh, what is interesting is that this variable ID is also correlated with all the other, all the other uh, variables. Uh, how do you think, why uh, it can happen? Why it is possible that ID is correlated with reading, writing, and so on? ID is just some identifier. It may be random or maybe the participants, uh, I don't know, the people that are uh, in this data frame, they were like ordered in some way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, it is uh, the usual case. It is possible, uh, the, 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 uh, there are two possibilities. One possibility is that this is just due to chance uh, and there is no actual correlation between ID and all these uh, this variables. But it is also possible uh, that uh, during data collections, these identifiers were assigned not in the random way, but in some other way. For example, assume that uh, assume that I do. Uh, assume that I do some test, written test, and I assign identifiers uh, to the works that uh, I receive, just in order of receiving. So when first student uh, returns me uh, the work with their solutions, uh, I uh, assign number one for this work, uh, identifier one. And for the second work, I assign identifier to and so on. And in this case, of course, it is possible that my identifiers uh, are correlated with, for example, total score for uh, the work, just because probably uh, if the work is simple, probably the first people who return this work uh, are those who did this work best. And uh, Possibly that something like this uh, happened here. Possibly that these identifiers were assigned after some, after some sorting of this table by some, some value. That can be anything. That can be correlated with some other values. And uh, how to test uh, which hypothesis is true? Uh, is it is it just randomness or not? 
or some feature of data generation process. By this correlation test? Yeah, let us do some correlation test. Um, let us uh, test, is it true that that ID is correlated, for example, with that read? Um, okay, p value is rather small. It is smaller than five percent. It seems uh, it seems that this correlation is not a pure chance. At least, probability that this correlation is a pure chance is rather small. So probably it is some feature of data generation process. Okay, and now. Uh, let me draw a picture that is usually that can be usually drawn here. I think I need a package that is called core plot. Okay, it seems that it is installed. And now let me use the same data set. I'm not sure, probably it will no. Okay. Let me just uh, save this. Uh, save this that numeric. Hmm. Uh, it shows uh, your visually the correlation matrix. It is a way to, vi to visualize the correlation matrix. And you see that there are well, that all correlations in our data set are positive. And uh, we see that correlation of ID with all variables are smaller than correlation of all other variables between themselves. And uh, anyway, this is this is rather nice picture. There are you know, various uh, various options. For example, we can draw on the uh, upper upper half of this uh, picture because uh, because it is in any way our correlation matrix is symmetric, and uh, probably we can do something more. Yes. And what shall we do if we want to show that some of those correlations are significant? I mean, if we uh -huh. use something like Bonferroni correction, I guess none of them will be significant because we do a lot of comparisons. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, it is a very good. Uh, it is a very good point uh, that if. Uh, uh, we want to find any uh, any statistically significant correlations between them. Uh, then we have to be cautious because if we just do all pairwise uh, all pairwise um, tests, for example, we consider all pairs of these variables, uh, then uh, then. Uh, uh, we uh, again, it is the same problem as we discussed previously that we have that uh, we have some probability to make a type one mistake in one test, and if we uh, uh, repeat this test several times, uh, then uh, we increase a probability of uh, a mistake. Uh, and 
Uh, but in, basically, I think that in this case, uh, everything will be significant. Uh, 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 my, um, in the following way, uh, I think that even, um, okay, let me try to use the corresponding library. Uh, first of all, I would say that if I select just one pair of variables, uh, if I do not select this pair of variables uh, by looking at the data, by choosing the variables with the largest correlation, uh, then uh, we don't have multiple comparisons problem because we have only one comparison. In fact, uh, when I get this result, uh, when I get this result, where it is. Okay, this result, uh, I did not select uh, this ID as a variable that is uh, highly correlated with this read. Uh, and I did not select this read as variable that is mostly correlated with ID. I just picked uh, a, any variable, or actually this was the first variable in the list. And uh, I, I found the correlation with this ID. And so uh, I think that in this part, I don't, uh, I don't do any multiple comparisons. And I believe in, in this p-value. I think that this p-value is correct. And uh, it is possible to, to draw some picture like, Chart correlation. Let us look at the result. Oh, that's a cool plot. So uh, this uh, this function draws me uh, all scatter plots, all pairwise scatter plots, uh, and uh, it, it it writes all the uh, all the correlations, and we see that all of them are significant. In fact, the one that we tested for is uh, has the smallest correlation out of uh, all other, and all of them are significant. So basically, the problem of uh, multiple comparisons uh, uh, occurs when we try to select, uh, try to find uh, those pair of variables that are correlated. If we, if we just want to test, is it true that all variables are correlated with each other, uh, then uh, this is probably fine to just, ju just to do this thing, just to make sure that all correlations are significant. By the way, uh, let me see. Okay, it seems that it doesn't, uh, that this thing uh, don't have any options to test for multiple comparison. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, by the way, um, just to demonstrate the effect that um, that Alexei mentioned, uh, there is a well-known site. Uh, let me show it to you. That is called the spurious correlation. Mm -hmm.
Uh, so this is uh, a, a site that collects uh, some very nice correlations uh, between between variables. Um, okay, most of them are rather creepy. Uh, okay, let us skip them. Okay, I like this one because it is the first not creepy. Uh, it is not uh, radically creepy. Uh, correlation, uh, this is the correlation between divorce rate in Maine and uh, per capita consumption of margarine in United States. And uh, we have correlation of 99%. And in fact, uh, we can find a p-value for this correlation. And uh, I did it once, but I'm not sure that I have the data. Let me see. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have uh, I don't have this data as a table right now, so I, I can't test uh, for statistical significance. But uh, you can trust me that this result is statistically significant as all the other results here. And um, why do uh, how what do you think how to how to explain this correlation? Is it possible to, to explain it in some way? Why we have so large correlation? Maybe the people who divorce in Maine and the people who read, uh, eat margarine are nearly of the same age and it's just like correlated with the number of people in these years of uh, like certain age Okay, yeah, probably something uh, something uh, that is devoted to some other variable like age. Uh, it's theoretically possible, but in fact, uh, this thing is purely spur spurious because how to how this site uh, is created. In in fact, they have uh, they have a tool that allows you to find your own correlation. And how uh, how it works? Uh, your uh, you select some variable, and you have a lot of other variables. For example, you have a lot of variables in, in different states, and uh, you. Okay, does it, does it work? No, it doesn't work. Okay, probably something is broken. Uh, anyway, yeah, the idea is that you have a lot of variables, like the thousands of variables. And uh, of course, it is possible that some of them are correlated just by chance. And uh, if you specifically find to try to find these correlations, you will find them if you have uh, enough variables. And again, if you do statistical test for these variables that you found, this is incorrect approach because basically it is like you considered a lot of uh, correlations, you tested a lot of correlations and you select one that, uh, that, that works. Again, you do the same, uh, the same mistake, uh, the mistake of multiple comparisons. So you, you have to be careful uh, again when you interpret these correlations. 
uh, the correct approach is that you initially have some hypothesis about your correlations. Like you, you assume that this particular variable and this particular variable is correlated, uh, that, that they are correlated. And then you collect your data and you apply your correlation test and you get an answer. Is it true or not? But if you have a lot of variables, then probably they, they will be correlated just, just by chance. In fact, I can I can show you an experiment that demonstrates exactly this exactly this thing. Um, let us generate a lot of columns. So. So I want to generate something, okay, list. Ivan would say that nobody writes in R like this. But I write. Uh, so, okay, let us generate uh, 100 variables and uh, all of, <clears throat> and all of them are independent. Um, Yeah, it doesn't work like this. Okay, probably. I just want to create a data frame, synthetic data frame with various Okay. Okay, it works. Uh, so I have hundred and one hundred and one rows, and let us find correlation between all of these rows. And for example, there are correlations. Okay, how to find max? Uh, no. Maximum is, uh, of course, one, but this is not uh, what I was interested in. Maybe okay. try to sort them. Okay. I want to I want to find the largest correlation. Ah, okay, I can find how to create an identity matrix in R. Ну, я сейчас хочу просто uh, вычесть вот этот столбец из вычесть диагональ из единиц. Видимо, можно просто сделать вот так. Uh, 
No, it doesn't work like this. Uh, sorry, this is some technical um, technical stuff. I'm not sure that I understand how to do it. Can't we just apply correlation test to each row and uh, get p value for each of them? Yeah, in fact, I can do. Okay, let us uh, let us use old old good um, for a loop. Again, sorry for those who knows our better. So I can just This must be numeric vector. Uh -huh. Why is it just with numbers? Like, I'm not sure. Uh, I, uh, um, I'm not sure they are numbers, but let us try. Ah, yeah. Sorry. So we can just put here i and j. Yeah, at least it works. And now let us put everything in one in one vector. But I want also to put okay in one data frame. Um, how to do it correctly in R. Okay, I want a list. Probably. And I want everything to append to some other list. Oh. Uh, how to do it in our sorry. Uh, you should uh output strelechka, output the pitaya and what that now list. No только это еще все тоже в скобки и диск. Хотя я не уверена, что это работает, конечно. Ой, сейчас что-то страшное будет. Ну ладно. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, yes, because uh, it created uh, it created something very 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 nested, because uh, at each point I create a list that contains uh, a list that created on the previous step. Okay, probably it. Uh, oh. You can create uh, within a cycle. You can create uh, not a list but a vector and uh, append it to the list. 
on every step. Okay. Uh, let us take p value. Okay, it seems that uh, everything. Okay. Um, everything is broken. No, this is not. Okay, it seems that uh, I lost my file, but probably it is too, uh, it is not very bad. Um, so probably I have to Google how to find maximum element in matrix in R. Maximum value of vector. Okay, let me try it again. Sorry, um, I created data frame. Okay, this part still works. Now, again, let me try to do correlation. I'm looking for this diagonal. Uh, Почему они нонконформабл? О, я. Окей. Угу. Окей. So now I want to find just maximum value and I can find which Okay, yeah, uh, it seems that it is the largest correlation. And now let us test it with core test. So
And we see that p-value is extremely small. Uh, but of course, it, it doesn't mean that this correlation is uh, significant because we explicitly created all these uh, all these uh, columns as to be something independent. Uh, so you see that if you just just look at very large correlation matrix and you see that uh -huh, there is a correlation here between this variable and this variable. So you probably uh, you probably are doing it wrong. And uh, here, for example, to apply uh, Bonferroni correction, we have to multiply this p-value by the number of tests that we performed. And the number of tests that we performed is uh, like 100 times 99 over two. And so this, If I multiply this p-value by the number of tests, oof, you see that this is larger than one. So uh, at least with this uh, Bonferroni correction, we see that there is no statistically significant uh, result, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, what we expected to see here. Uh, but anyway, uh, this, is, uh, this is important example that if you look for something that that you if you look in a large amount of variables for variables that correlate with each other no you're probably doing it wrong okay and uh i think that's all for today more questions Okay, then see you on Monday. We return to the usual timetable when we, when we have classes on Monday. Okay, bye. Thank you, bye. Goodbye, thank you.